As we enjoy great advantages from the invention of others, we should be glad of an opportunity to serve others by an invention of ours. And this we should do freely and generously. But nothing he did as a scientist would do more to serve others and bring him more fame than his work in the fledgling field of electricity. I never was before engaged in any study, Franklin wrote, that so totally engrossed my attention and my time. Franklin had become interested in electricity, which at the time was certainly not understood, but it was also a sort of a parlor trick. People would come in with a, with a glass rod and some silk and, and shock each other and, and lift pieces of paper. He and his Junto friends staged electricity parties in which they used a charge to ring bells and make a toy he called an electrical spider jump around. Men and women exchanged electrical kisses. Franklin also electrified a gilt-edged portrait of King George II that created what he called a high treason shock if someone touched his crown. He used a more powerful shock to kill a turkey and reported that it seemed uncommonly tender compared to one slaughtered the conventional way. He kept saying, we have to find useful things to do with this electricity. He said one of the only useful things in his first year of experiments was that he would get shocked and knock him down. And he said electricity was useful for making a vain person humble. As his studies turned more serious and he began documenting his observations, he came up with new terms to describe electricity's mysterious properties. It had two charges, he wrote, positive and negative, and it could travel by what he called a conductor. He grouped a collection of glass containers together, each possessing an electrical charge, and named it a battery, using the military term for an array of cannons. Benjamin Franklin comes up with the most important theory of the era, which is the single fluid theory of electricity, which is that it's not some substance, but it's a positive and a negative, and it flows from positive to negative. But pure science had less appeal to Franklin than putting it to practical use. Lightning was seen as being divine retribution. Of course, the irony was that most of the buildings that were destroyed by lightning were churches, because in a lot of communities in the 18th century, they were the highest structure. Franklin is convinced that lightning bears a similarity to an electrical spark. He's looking at electric sparks, he's looking at lightning, and he puts in his notebook all the similarities, and at the end of the page, he says, let the experiment be made. Franklin detailed his theory that lightning was electricity and that metal objects could draw off a charge. He proposed an experiment that involved placing a person in what he called a sentry box on a high tower or hilltop and raising a sharply pointed iron rod when storm clouds approached. He shared his observations with a London scientist, Peter Collinson, who had supplied him with equipment for his electrical studies. Franklin was planning to conduct the experiment on the new steeple of Christ Church off Market Street as soon as its construction was completed. But the work went slowly, and Franklin grew impatient. He then came up with an alternative way to test his theory. He was less confident in this method and decided to do it in secret trusting only his son William to take part. In June of 1752, with storm clouds threatening, he and William went to a field with a silk kite to which Franklin had attached a sharp pointed wire. Dangling at the end of the kite's long twine string was a metal key. They got the kite aloft and Franklin maneuvered it toward the approaching clouds. What he was showing was that the atmosphere became electrified, not that the kite had to be struck by a lightning bolt, which is often the way it's depicted in illustrations. 
Franklin suddenly noticed the individual strands of hemp along the kite string stiffening and standing on end. He moved his free hand toward the key and felt a mild shock on his knuckle. When the rain began and water started streaming down the twine, sparks flew off the key. Franklin was exultant. Thereby, he wrote of his experiment, the sameness of electrical matter with that of lightning has been completely demonstrated. Hi, this is Ken Burns. I hope you enjoyed that excerpt from the film David Schmidt and I made exploring the extraordinary life of Benjamin Franklin. Here are some more clips you might like, and you can watch the entire Benjamin Franklin series on the PBS video app or at pbs.org.